we are here. We are going to make a real pattern this week, and um, I am so excited to finally be here and to get to use all our newfound skills. Um, before we get started, I wanted to take a minute to show you a little bit about patterns, pattern buying, that kind of a thing, so that you can try to make sure I'm in the camera right now. Um, Patterns, pattern buying, making sure that you know what to do, how to buy a pattern, um, and what to, how to read a pattern on the back. Make sure you have all the right stuff. So I kind of have some patterns here with me, and I wanted to kind of show you. Um, first, there's a difference. There are what I would call designer patterns, and then there are, um, let's call them, uh, well, not designer patterns. I, the ones that you can buy at Joann's. They're great, they're great. Um, but they're the ones that are 99 cents, always 40% off, la la la. They're fine, and actually, if you pick your fabrics well, you can make great stuff. I have made great stuff for myself and for my kids with them. Um, they're just harder to read. Um, they're, they're just not as clear, not as like nice and enjoyable. It's not the same experience. So anyway, um, like here is a cheap pattern from Joann's to make aprons, and I used this with my sewing class um, that I taught a couple years ago. Um, don't pick this fabric, for one thing, and the, the whole apron will look so much more beautiful. Anyway, that's besides the point. Um, these patterns are usable, and I want you to be able to buy a 99 cent pattern, be able to read it, feel comfortable with it, not feel like you want to tear your hair out, and um, and and be able to pull off something awesome with it. Because, I mean, yes, you can buy a, well, this was $5, but normally they're not. Like this one was, I think, $16. And this is the one that's like so many sizes and I'm gonna use forever and ever. But um, I want you to be able to use this pattern and make something awesome, that's all I'm saying. So first, I'm gonna tell you how to buy a pattern at Joann's, and then I'm gonna tell you how to read Joann's patterns and normal patterns. So um, first, how to buy a pattern at your fabric store. Okay, it starts with the tables and it starts with that big table with a whole bunch of books full of patterns on it and possibly an intimidating interaction with people who really know what they're doing and feel like you might be out of place. Don't feel out of place. Um, just sit down at the table, um, have like a maybe a pen and a piece of paper with you so you can make notes of what patterns look good to you. I actually use my iPhone and just like take pictures of the pages that I want and make sure that the number's in view. Um, and sometimes I feel like people judge me for that because I think I may be like stealing something, but I'm not. I'm just taking pictures so that it's the way I make notes. Anyway, um, so you sit down and you flip through the books and you think, that's an adorable pattern for an apron. I wanna buy that. And so you mark down the numbers, there's always a number. This is M5505, and M, I think, just means, well, McCall's. Um, so I write down that number and I go to those giant file, file drawers and um, file through the McCall's section and get 5505 out. And then you have to, um, don't just grab any of them that say 5505 because there's gonna be a size thing too. Now in this case, I think this might be all the sizes, but um, sometimes like they'll do small and medium on one package and the other one will be large and extra large or however that works. Or if it's like sizes two through 10 and then 12 through 16 or however. So make sure you grab your size. That's another important thing when you're buying a pattern. And so once you've picked it out of the book, gotten it from the file drawer, gotten your right size, um, you can turn it over to this side see um, there are going to be some important things to read on the back um, before you leave the fabric store you're going to need to know oh I just went out of the screen you're going to need to know um, how much fabric to buy and so on this one I know we're talking about a pattern that doesn't even apply to this week but I really want you to know this um, and maybe it goes without saying but I'm just going to be exhaustive here um, if you well, let's see, on the front you see how there's three different patterns you can make, like a half apron, a full apron, or a full apron with a ruffle. So you've got options. And I want to make the full apron with the ruffle because that's amazing. So I'm gonna come closer to show you in the back and not make it too close because I want it to be in focus. Okay, so I want to make the full right apron with the ruffle, so that's number C, letter C. So I go to apron C and I'm size small, so if I have fabric that is 45, 
there that is 45 inches wide. So that's just regular cotton fabric. If you have the upholstery fabric, it's going to be 60 inches. Normally it'll be 45 inches wide. So I need for a size small one and three quarter yards of fabric. Now if that's if I'm doing all of it in all the same fabric and I rarely do that because I like to make lots of patterns. Um, anyway, um, but generally you'll need one and three quarter yards of fabric to accomplish this is all they're saying. Um, if I want to make the half apron and I'm large, I do apron B, size large, I need a yard and a half. Um, anyway, so that's how that goes. And then down here it says notions. For apron C, which is actually the one that I want to do, I need two and three quarter yards of medium rickrack. That is, of course, if I want to use rickrack. But um, anyway, this just kind of gives you an idea of how to read this pattern. Also at the top it's always going to say su suggested fabrics. Um, they're saying gingham, chintz, cotton, la la la. Um, go with something that's thinnish and lightweight because you don't want to be draped in curtains while you cook. Um, Anyway, so that's basically how to read that. Usually one half is English, one half is Espanol, and that's how that goes. So, when you buy your pattern at the fabric store, find out how much fabric you need, find out what notions you need, rickrack, elastic, um, you might need ribbon, or I don't know, obviously you need coordinating thread. Um, so get your fabric, get your notions, get your right size, and you are ready to go. Okay. Now that we talked about the cheap patterns, which you can make great, you really can, um, we'll talk about the designer patterns because they're awesome. Okay. Um, by the way, one of my favorite little kids pattern designers is Oliver and S. Um, I've made this dress for Hazel and it's super cute. Um, same thing here, like you pick your, make sure you get your right size at the top and find your sizing, find out how much fabric you need, pick your view, and that's how it goes. So I think we've got how to pick a pattern, um, in which case we can kind of skip the rest of these, but um, we can move on to the one that we're going to do, which I'm very excited about. I've had fun picking fabrics to make it, and I hope you guys have too. Um, here is the front. It doesn't matter, but one of the first things when you open up a pattern, uh, one of the first things I want you to do um, as my dutiful student is find out what the seam allowance is for the pattern. Um, it's going to be different places in different patterns. Um, in the, the cheap Joann's thing, it's going to be near the top on one of these papery things. Um, and it'll say, but on ours, and we're just going to move on to ours now because I don't want to waste your time. Um, on ours, Sandy Henderson actually usually puts it on the back, inside page. And I think she says here, um, and number two, all seam allowances, unless otherwise stated, are half an inch. This is so important, and that's why it's one of the first things I ever want you to do when you look at a pattern. Because if you assume all seam allowances are a quarter of an inch, you aren't going to be using her pattern properly, and thus it might not work out properly. Um, you need to have all your seam allowances be the same, and you need it to be the specified width that the designer has um, recommended because she made a pattern assuming that a half an inch of everything that she's having you cut out is going to go on the other side of your seam. And you want everything to line up. And I'm getting a little bit sick, so I kind of feel like I have to cough, but I'm okay. Anyway, so that's the first thing that I want you to look at. And that's, of course, after you pick your fabric and get your notions. And on the back of this, it's so pretty and easy to find. So anyway, that's that. Um, so after you find out your seam allowance, and um, you've got your fabric picked out and your notions and those kinds of things, you can go ahead and um, get started. We have chosen to do, well, I've chosen for you. We've chosen to do the straight bag, which is option A. A lot of patterns come with several options and that makes them more worth the money, in my opinion. Um, like this Claire pattern that I have has like a ton of different ones that you can um, mix and match and make great. Um, anyway, um, once we have chosen our view, we're gonna just go right to that page in the book, which actually happens to be this front one. And we're going to start to find out, basically, this half of the page is just about cutting out and it doesn't actually hardly say any words. Mostly pictures, because it's a designer pattern, and it's wonderful. Um, so we're going to look at this and then also open up our paper and um, look at that too. And that's where we're headed now, so I'm going to go stand back there and get us going.